yes is coming soon to iPhones and iPads as early as with the iOS 17 update. And this is not just a rumor since the European Union, co-EU, seems like they're the only ones focused on fighting for consumer rights after forcing Apple to possibly switch to type C after the new proposed right to repair law they now seem to be finally getting Apple to relent on sideloading apps. And even if you're someone with zero interest in installing an app that's not on the App Store, this is still a major win for you, for us, for all consumers. Now guys, think about this for a minute. When we started with phones, there were no app stores. Hell, there were no apps. We'd buy a phone, use it as is, and later on when we broke it or it stopped working for some reason, any reason, we'd go ahead and buy a new one. And then we started getting more and more powerful phones, ones that could do a whole lot more. And with more powerful phones came apps. And with apps came app stores. Apple right from day one had a plan, a master plan, but a simple one. Control the apps, control the profit. Well, Android has always allowed sideloading APKs right since day one, that's not been the case with Apple. Apple went in with a walled garden approach, meaning you can only buy or download apps from the Apple App Store. Now, if you are thinking, but Ash, isn't that why Apple's more secure? Don't they do it to keep their devices safer? Well, that is the official party line, yes, but Macs are also considered safer and you can get a DMG file from anywhere on that, can't you? Now here's the deal guys, Apple charges developers up to 30% of all revenue for anything sold via the App Store. And that's not just for the apps you pay for, not the initial pay and buy part. If you wanna buy a new skin for your Call of Duty Mobile, guess what? Apple is making 30% of that too. Now remember the whole Fortnite fiasco? That's because of this exact policy. Now if you're thinking, ah, okay, but I don't really care about paid apps or Call of Duty skins or Fortnite. Well, in that case, maybe you pay for YouTube Premium. This is the reason why you pay more for Premium on iOS than on the web or on Android. And if you're looking for more advanced solutions, well, that's not really an option on iOS, is it? Now, it could very well be. Now, apart from paid apps or in-app purchases, there are a lot of apps which, while being useful, doesn't necessarily fit with the App Store policies. For example, Google has always allowed emulators on their platform. As long as, you know, pirated stuff isn't included with it, it's good to go. But Apple, on the other hand, has never been a fan of emulation. Getting emulators on iPhones has been painful and it's been a tedious process. Similarly, ad blockers, now say Blockada, one of the best ad blockers available. That is a version on the Play Store and the App Store, but this is a stripped down version because of course Google or Apple have stringent policies to avoid ad blocking, given that is a major revenue source for them. Guys, uh, monopolies suck. Giving any company a monopoly kills competition. A very practical and real life example for this would be the difference in game prices between games on PC and games on consoles. Now, I've covered this in detail in a video in the past. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Highly recommend you watch that after this one. Now, the short version is on PC, you can buy a game in a multitude of ways, whether it's of the publisher directly from Steam, from the Microsoft Store, from GOG, from Epic. Game prices, as a result, are considerably lower when compared to their console counterparts. Now, that's because a little after launch, each of these stores are competing for your money. But on phones, this doesn't really happen. But why though? The smartphone at the end of the day is nothing more than a very small and portable computer. So why do we, the consumers, need to pay Apple or Google 30% more on every transaction? Now with the EU forcing Apple to change their stance on sideloading apps, an actual alternate store could be reality. So having the ability to install apps from outside the Apple App Store, something, remember, something Apple does allow on their Macs, that would lead to more competition while also potentially allowing for apps that don't necessarily meet Apple's policies. This would give developers an option to not pay Apple for every transaction. And if these turn out to be quite successful, who knows, maybe Apple will be forced to cut down the percentage they charge. So even if you are someone who doesn't care about the scenarios I talked about, this could indirectly benefit you. Now, I know the obvious question here is, well, if Google's already been allowing sideloading 
and they still charge 30% the same as Apple, how is this gonna really change anything? Well, because thanks to Android's fragmentation, which is a topic for another day, Android has never been the first choice for developers when it comes to paid apps. Now, Apple has over a 55% market share in the US, 30% in Europe, and globally 21%. Now these numbers do go up even more when you take into account tablets where iPads, they rule, right? As you can see, Apple devices are more popular in richer, more developed countries, which has led to the common consensus amongst developers that iPhone users are more willing to pay for apps than Android users are. Now, if they get access to those users without being reliant on Apple's App Store, what would stop, say, Epic from coming up with an Epic Game Store for mobile games? You know, to give you some perspective, on PC, the Epic Game Store, it takes less than half the cut that Steam does. So anyways, I thought this was a very interesting development and thought I'd share, share it with you guys. So what do you think? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Ash here from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.